Hi, it's March, and we're here for the Babson Community Video, and I'm delighted to have a number of distinguished colleagues here today and here to set up our conversation with two of our uh, interesting faculty from the Arts and Sciences is Carolyn Hotchkiss, our Dean of the Faculty. I'm delighted to be with Vicki Rogers, who is an economic botanist. Oh, sure, that could be part of my title. That could be part of your title? <laughs> sure. Okay, very good. And Fred Opie, who is a professor of food, ways, and culture, Am I close on that? I think that's pretty good. Okay, good. Uh, Fred teaches out of our History and Society Division, and Vicki teaches out of our Math Science Division. And I brought them in because they're two of our newer faculties, and probably many people really don't know what a food ways and food culture person does, or an economic botanist. So I thought they'd be very interesting people to, to talk to today. So Vicki, tell us what you do. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, I guess my background is actually really in uh, forest ecology, um, which is an interesting mix being in a business school. Um, but uh, the course that I teach on economic botany is looking at how people interact with plants. So it's a lot of work on the plant biology between how plants function and then also how do we use plants? What do we get from them? Um, what do we use them for? Um, and those kind of questions. Um, so it's a really, really interesting class. And I have a lot of very interested students. That's great. And Fred, what about you? It's a perfect... Uh... Yeah, it ties in together with yeah, the food, I for mean, sure. This is a great setup. We should because... Only if you're going to talk about a plant-based diet. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I mean, Vegetarian per, only. The person who studies food ways like I do, food ways is a simple definition, is the explanation of why we eat historically what we eat and how those things change over time. And plants is one of the things we talked Absolutely. about. Uh, my first semester here in the fall, I taught a course called um, African History and Food Ways. So we look at all the different plants and animals that have influenced uh, our food systems here in the Americas and all other parts of the world. So I very much, I'm interested in what yeah, you teach. Yeah, uh, I'm interested in what you teach too. <laughs> well, we'll elaborate. let you get acquainted <laughs> get from there and see what happens. One of the things that's a little bit unusual about having both of you is, is you're really sort of a testament to how powerful the learning is here for our undergraduate students in the arts and sciences and humanities and social sciences. Uh, Babson does a really good job, I think, of providing a well-rounded education for our students. And unlike almost any other undergraduate business school, students here take the liberal arts courses in all four years of their undergraduate program, rather than just taking them in the first two and then going off and doing business later. So we've taken a little bit of a different approach. What's it like for the two of you teaching arts science and teaching social sciences, I think that's where I would put this, mm. humanities, humanities, social science, uh, in in a context of a, a lot of students who think they're here to study business. You want to? Vicki, oh, ladies okay. first. Very ladies good. first. Okay. <laughs> um, I really, really love the sort of challenge that comes with teaching non-majors. Um, I wasn't sure that was where I was going to end up when I finished um, my graduate degree. Um, and I came here at, to Babson actually as a sabbatical replacement for one semester, thinking it was sort of going to be a, you know, sure, I'll come, I'll get some teaching experience, I'll deal with the sort of non-majors and see how it is. And I just, I really, really love it. I see the connections between science and business so strongly. Um, and I love making students see that. Um, What's an example of what goes on in the classroom that make, that makes that case? Um, I can give you the example of the course I'm teaching right now, Environmental Technology, um, which is one of the Science B required courses. They have options for what to take, and Environmental Technology is one of those options. Um, and we have this great project that we have them do, group project, where they have to actually work in teams and create virtually a brand new environmental technology product. So something that is feasible, um, something that is not bending any laws of, you know, the way science works, uh, uh, science fiction kind of things. I thought we were talking um, about federal laws, not laws of <laughs> laws, no, no, of, no, laws, laws of nature. <laughs> <laughs> you can bend federal laws, that's fine. Um, no, no. Uh, but then they have to go through, so they have to create this. That's why we have a business um, law faculty. That's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I steer clear of that. Um, but so we have them work on this and um, and virtually create it and design it and think of all the different things that they need to think about, about being innovative, coming up with, with something that's brand new, and um, and going through the market regulations and the um, considerations for exactly how something is structured and something works. Um, and I think it makes, it allows students to really sort of see the cross dynamics really, really well with science and, and their business applications. You know, in, in my courses, um, again, I'll, I'll refer to the course I taught on African history and food ways, and in this semester, I'm teaching a course on African-American uh, history and foodways. Uh, my specialty is African history, African diaspora history, 
fancy word to say people living outside their home origins. So if you were Irish American, it would be Irish diaspora type of uh, history. So take, take a look at something like the African slave trade, the Atlantic slave trade. Uh, a lot of the new scholarship comes out, talks about the role of African plants and entrepreneurs in providing the essentials for that slave trade. That is, what were the, the staples needed for those ships? Uh, what roles did African food play once uh, the Africans were enslaved in the New World? And an example would be in Low Country, Georgia, and South Carolina. With the rice industry we have there was all created by African technology. And there's enslaved people that brought in and instituted uh, a food system that the, the, the people that owned them knew nothing about. So we look at those different things. The other thing is, um, I find the important role of, uh, of entrepreneurs, particularly uh, African-American women, uh, throughout history and from the enslavement period and the role that uh, women played um, in providing foods in places like Jamaica and other parts of the Caribbean, uh, the role that food played in gaining one's uh, capital and thus capital necessary to buy yourself or your loved one's freedom, but also the role of restaurants and things like that in a more contemporary time period. Uh, I, a book that I'm going to be working on and, and collecting sources now is a book called Feeding the Revolution. And look at the role of food in social movements, like the civil rights movement. You think of things like the, the Montgomery bus boycott. That boycott was the capital for that boycott came from African-American women who baked goods and then sold the goods in order to keep that social revolution going on. So food and students and, and business are intertwined in very natural, organic ways in the course. Does actually. it end up with a very different syllabus than the school you taught at before you got here? Um, not a, not a very different. You know, I don't have to force feed uh, history and business. It's it's always been quite natural the way I do it. Uh, I have in the last probably three years moved more into the the lane of doing foodways, and that's that's the area where I'm doing most of my public history. So probably that's more on my syllabus than before. I taught the African history course at my last institution, but I didn't have that title foodways to the end of it. Now that's kind of a consistent what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's great. Vicki, you've been involved in some of the sustainability initiatives that have been going on, uh, and I believe you had an interesting experience with a group of students in Costa Rica yes. over the January break. <laughs> Absolutely. You want to talk Wonderful about that experience. just a little bit? Yeah. Um, that's and actually another one of the things that I love um, about being here at Babson is that I've had a chance to work with not just our great science group, but also folks outside in the law division, um, in the liberal arts, um, in entrepreneurship, sort of work across um, the divisions. And Tony Lester from the law division um, came to me and was interested um, in working on an offshore course together. And so um, we put this course together on ecotourism, looking at it from the law side and from the ecology side, sort of the impacts. And um, we had a fabulous time. We took a group of 15 students down uh, to Costa Rica. We stayed in San Jose for a couple of nights. We stayed at this, what was quote unquote, a green hotel. Um, and we did mm. some, had the students do some certification and uh, analysis of what that really meant. Um, and then we went into the Monteverde forest, like in the middle of the jungle. Um, and we stayed at this really, really interesting, real eco-tourist uh, destination um, that was, um, Certainly not primitive, but um, not the five-star hotel kind of place. <laughs> um, and uh, they cooked all their own or grew all their own food there locally. Um, and we got to go to coffee plantations and interact with the people. And so it was a lot about, you know, sort of learning the ecology of the land and then also sort of connecting that to the people. And it was great. I, I was thrilled because I had students knee-high in mud <laughs> marching through <laughs> the jungle appreciating A faculty the members <laughs> dream <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> appreciating the value of ants you know i was like yay business students appreciating ants it was great can, was, can i piggyback really on that yeah, absolutely uh, vicky you don't know this but uh i actually did my honeymoon in costa rica no oh, yeah, that's so great. we we went knee high, <laughs> knee -high, knee -high. Mud, yes. uh, so we stayed in san jose and then Part of our uh, honeymoon, honeymoon package was an ecological tour on the oh, Pacific Coast. Great. So I, I lived out all these different oh, things wonderful. that you're talking about. The other thing that many people don't know is that my second book is on the Caribbean coast of Guatemala. Oh, so okay. I did dissertation research for seven months in Guatemala. I'm bilingual. And that's the other thing I actually like about Babson. There are so many international students, particularly from uh, Latin American countries, yeah. that I have a, a really good interaction with them. And when I teach African or African American history courses, I'm constantly re referring to uh, my other work in, in Latin America that I, that I work on. That's fascinating. That's so great. Vicki, what are you working on now in your research? Um, in my research, I have um, three projects um, I'm working on. The first is um, a project out in Waltham. Um, so I do sort of 
basically my research is around the theme of how humans are interacting natural ecosystems. And um, there's a project that's been set up in Waltham um, called the BASE project. So it's the Boston Area Climate Experiment. And so it's being run by a professor who was at UMass Boston and is now out at Purdue. And it's a whole collaboration of a number of different scientists looking at how plants and soils are going to change in future climate conditions. Mm. Um, and it's really, really interesting. It's, I've brought students out there to go and look at it for some of my coursework. Um, they have 36 plots. They're like two meters by two meter plots. And they're experiencing different amounts of temperature and precipitation. So they're actually changing um, the conditions that these plants are undergoing. And it's been going on since 2007. Um, and so they're continually um, taking measurements. And so we've been looking at exactly how um, a number of plants are changing their photosynthesis. So what's going to happen? Are plants going to be able to suddenly absorb lots more CO2? Or are they going to sort of reach their maximum and sort of peter out? Hmm. Um, and mm. so that's some, one of the projects um, we've been looking at. I also do work on invasive species. That was mm -hmm. one of my um, mm. topics for my dissertation. And so I'm looking at um, starting a project in Broadmoor at the Audubon Society, trying to control some of their bittersweet that they have, mm -hmm. which is a terrible invasive plant. Mm -hmm. Um, and then some other work with garlic mustard as an invasive plant. Um, I also understand that you've been connected to our colleagues at Olin and Wellesley relative yes. to the sustainability curriculum. Can you talk a little yes. bit about that? Yeah, yeah. I've been involved um, in the beginning in sort of the startup of the Tri-School Initiative for the Certificate, mm -hmm. um, which sounds like it's going to be a wonderful program, and I'm excited to see it go forward. Um, I've also worked with um, some folks at Wellesley. I bring my economic botany course over to the greenhouses there. They have some wonderful mm -hmm. facilities. Um, and so working sort of across um, schools, too, it's great. Any big surprises for either of you, uh, you know, coming to a place like Babson, given what you do? Surprises? Pleasant um, ones. This is a video <laughs> we're going you know, you know, I, Well, you know, I, I was, I would say student-wise, uh, the students are, I didn't expect them to be as global, as international. So that part of the student population I was unaware of, was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I wasn't aware of how much uh, Babson is doing and connecting with other parts of the globe as far as uh, pro study abroad programs, uh, connections, collaborations with other institutions. I mean, I, I think globally. So that was really refreshing to me, you know, to kind of see that. Um, other than that, I, I, not, no, I can't really say, mm -hmm. I can't say surprises. Uh, you know, the facilities are top rate. Uh, the classrooms, as far as, I, I teach a very technical, you know, type of technology-related classes. For example, I have syllabus that are hot-wired, so when you click it, goes right to a journal article, opens up, and things like that. I use a lot of uh, YouTube and different technologies, and the classrooms uh, allow for that to happen, much more so than my last institution. So those kind of things have been nice for, you know, for me. Great. How about you, Vicki? Um, I've been really surprised um, about sort of the interest level of the students around the topics that I teach. Um, so I teach a course. Um, I was hired to teach environmental technology um, when I first came. And um, the students that are interested in that um, are, I'm always surprised. I go around the class in the beginning and I ask students, you know, who's planning to go on and do something related to something sort of sustainable and the majority of students are. Um, they're interested. They, they understand the importance. If they're not necessarily going into the field of, you know, biofuels or something, they understand the necessity to learn about and understand um, the sustainable environmental problems um, of our day. So that's been. Really you nice. spend most of your time worrying about the composition and the nurturing and the growth of the faculty and the faculty of the future. As you hear from our two colleagues here, what kinds of thoughts work in your mind about what we have and where we're going? I guess I can stop worrying. I think that would be the first or the first thought. I'm thinking this is great and and this is what's so interesting to me about the faculty of the future is the here are two examples of people that if you talk to faculty members even maybe 10 years ago that your disciplines wouldn't necessarily have been disciplines that would have been recognized inside academic institutions and so there's so much change that's going on in terms of what we expect people to do mm -hmm. and how we expect people to uh, expand their disciplines and work across traditional disciplinary boundaries. And you guys are two really good examples of how this plays out and how much benefit our students get out of it. And it's so much fun to contemplate doing this with lots more people and, and bringing lots more new faculty members to the party uh, with disciplines that, that uh, our alums probably have never heard of, uh, but are really necessary for 21st century business leaders. And it's a, it's a neat example of how important all of the component pieces of Babson are, that you can't 
have business without the sciences. You can't have business without culture and history. You can't have business without the arts. It just isn't good enough. And, and that's really nifty to see. So I'm delighted to have brought you guys here. And hopefully now everybody on campus will know who you are because this video will go viral around the campus. And, and Especially since Carolyn's in it. Apparently, <laughs> since I'm in it. Uh, but I, it's, it's, it's nifty to, to bring in a couple of our newer faculty members so that people get a chance to know you. Um, and hopefully we'll have several more of these with faculty members from around the, the college as a whole. Both to know your work and to actually celebrate its impact on what we do here at Babson. Yeah. So thanks so much for everything you are and do, uh, and for everything that you bring to the Babson community. We look forward to continuing to track your progress as you move through your career. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for this month. Yeah. See you next month.